Righty, uh, good morning. We're in the uh, the seven seater Grandpa wagon on our way to Burfin Gary to see our special friends at Superior. We've got the trailer on the back. Kind of gave a pretty exciting package for the new Ute. A fair bit of suspension going under it, so um, that's what this episode will be about. We've got long arms, high flex arms, got all the sway bars, the chassis bracing, the diff bracing, full high flex kit. Yeah, we're picking it up all today. Show you guys what this uh, good gear's about. You. How's the grandpa wags copping the seats and the steering wheel while I'm building a new one? Just pulling up, let's get this package. Ready, cheers man. And back to the shop we go. Package secured. On the way back to the workshop, unload the pallet, and then I go away for a month, so I won't be able to touch any of it until I get back, but you will see it in a second anyway. Right, overall unloaded into the shop, ready to start hooking in. Coils, drag links, uh, your remote resis, literally everything you want in the kit, so within the next month and a half, that'll be going under the ute cap, which you should know about right now. It's gonna be epic. So as you can see, we've got the full superior catalogue. We've got coils, long arms, pennards, radius arms, drop boxes, super flex sway bars, tie rods, drag links, tender sway bar link, and we've actually gone with the 2.5 shockies for this build, so it'll be super, super comfortable. A bit less flexy than I would like, but I'm not going for a comp truck. I'm not trying to do the same shit that I was doing in the wagon, so it'll be comfortable and hopefully good to go around Australia and hit all these corrugations. Just taking the um, drag link, pin hard nut off, smack those two out, I'll move up here, take these radius arm bolts out, and then just the brake line and the whole different drop out. One hour later. Last radius arm box and then the dip come out. Yep, all that one. Got the double whammy. Oh. Don't, don't break eye contact. Why don't you just get a gun on that one? He doesn't have a 24 mil socket. Oh. Catch you out. Catch you out. Front diff's out, moving on to the rear diff now. Got shocks. Lower control arms, up control arms, and then there's a couple other things like your breather and your brakes and sway bar. This will drop out. All these spiders reckon. Hey man, just take this one off. Go and get like black metal paint. What brand are they? Fucking brand new is what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Maxi extracts. Okay. Oh, well, so much. Now I should be able to go up here. Front and rear dip ready for bracing. Hell mad smoke. And then hit third, then just flatten it, it'll just spin to hell mad smoke. Up is still gonna come out. A couple other little bits and pieces. Your butt, what do you reckon? An hour? Yeah, drive shafts are out. No shocks in the front. Not a big job to get your diffs out. Not with a hoist anyway. Right, so this is the GUGQ Ute Rear Coil Tower Brace. 
especially for the wagons. Obviously, they're not made to have as much weight as you might be putting on a canopy, tray, whatever you're doing, steel setup, it'll be heavy. Mm. Oh, I'm only doing an alley setup, but it's over engineering. So these go on like this. Slide on here, it's just a bolting kit. All your breathers and your brake lines come up over the top. That obviously bolts to the tower brace. That will slide in up like, like that. Uh, your lines will run back over that so they don't rub on your metal and wear a hole and leak and have no brakes. So we're just trying to put the dropout cones in as well while we're up here. These are very, very simple to set up. It's just a bit of an awkward spot. So something we just found out with these coil tower brace kits, these bolts are the wrong way around. You want the bolt head it's down and the nut on the top. These ones, so it doesn't affect your coil. So we're doing extended bump stops. These bolts are literally famous for snapping, so. This is like an 80 series bump stop. So it's basically just an extension for a GU because that's what GUs come with. 25 mil bump, and then these are called a progressive bump. So when you apply pressure on the bottom, they progressively close. So basically underneath the car, I'm looking at not a whole lot Toyota, and honestly not a whole lot Nissan. There's a whole lot missing. We've got sway bar mounts for the rear. Obviously not factory. Doesn't look right at all, really. Oh wait, that's for the front. These are for the fronts. Yep. These are your rear sway bar mounts. They mount up here like this, um, instead of your factory ones here, because your sway bar is longer for your super flex sway bars. And it just goes like that. Perfect. So we've found out that these are like locators. So if we put this up here and then chuck that there, and then that, you can't get the wrong angle. Like it has to be. Bang. And then yeah, that's how you fit these. This is just a quick reminder to clean out under your coil tower <laughs> pieces. <laughs> We've got half of Bribe right now. Oh my goodness. In my car. This car's never been running in my use, so this is not me. Chopper pudding for dessert. <laughs> right, so we've installed the superior shock towers and the resi mounts and extended bump stops for the front. Now I'm just fitting up the front sway bar mounts, which as you can see, these are the ones I thought were the rear, but this is where they're supposed to go. Sway bar mount installed for your front, and it's time for bedtime. We'll see you tonight. The next day. Welcome back to another day. It's sad day today. Last night I got a couple of bits and pieces in. We'll show you that in a second. We've got Ryan here from Outlaw Customs. He's in to do all my fabricating. So we've got a couple of bit braces and some other stuff. He'll run you through what he's going to do and uh, how he's going to do it and hopefully we'll get some nice shots of him doing it throughout the day. So basically, superior engineering, front and rear diff bracing, superior long arm kit, so we'll strip all the paint off, get a nice clean slate, we'll do some weld through primer and that way it doesn't rust out behind it all. And then stitch weld it in a way that obviously it won't warp the diff and yeah, go from there. Happy days. Let's get into it. So while Ryan preps those discs for welding, I'm just going to chuck these drop boxes in and get the front arms ready for the front diff to go in. So why do you spray the inside? That's well through copper primer. Paint on the back side. Well, on your diff where you've removed all your paint on the back side here, it's all bare steel. By the time you weld it, it's basically heat resistant. It prevents Ooh. rust and, yep.
<laughs> Split him head open. Why this happened? Can you even? Now we're walking around, we can walk around like this. <laughs> Engineering, brain bracing. leg bracing. <laughs> Not too well. Hey, that's not bad. <laughs> Give it back to the welder man. Rear diff is all welded up, all braces are fitted, ray shock towers are fitted. Yeah, the whole thing's fully braced, over engineered. Hopefully, never gonna bend it. I'm just gonna give him a quick rust guard, gloss black paint. It will be going to a proper undercoating, rust proofing. Yeah, it'll do the whole undercast. I don't know when that'll be, so it's between now and then. Just so it looks nice, but yeah, it'll all be getting done. Rear panards, rear shocks, rear upper arms, all in, all the fronts in, ready for the disc to be reconnected. Yeah, just finished off rear diff, uh, moving on to the front. Well through primers already dried up, just clean all the rust proofing off this stuff and paint the, paint the back side and tack it all in and then we'll get this welded up too. So we missed most of the front diff getting welded up, but it's all the same process as rear diff that you guys just saw, so that should be sweet. Take the sub tank out so I can get to these long arm mounts when we draw the new ones in. Make life a whole lot easier and get better welds on, so yeah. So this is all the process of removing the old long arm mounts. So here we're just cutting off the old mounts before we grind them down, back to almost flat against the chassis. And then we can move the new long arm mounts on and weld them to the new spots and put the new arms in.
unfortunately the GoPro died last night, but we did manage to get the full rear diff under and basically on its own weight. We got all the components back in and I'll give you a quick run through on next episode, which comes out next week, part two. Okay, you do not want to miss next week's episode. We finish off the G suspension, we get everything back under it, we get it on the spheres, we roll it out the front, and we try and do some cheeky flex test, take you through everything we've done, how to do it, and what the G looks like as it sits right now. It's coming along well, and I am super, super stoked to get this thing on the road. Cannot wait any longer. See you guys next week. Akutcha!